And now the bombs are starting to drop in the Middle East. You see what's going on there, right? That would have never happened. Israel would have never happened. Ukraine would have never happened with Russia. You wouldn't have ever had a, an embarrassment like that Afghanistan disaster, what, most, worst, most embarrassing day in our country's history. Inflation would have never happened. We would have never had. It was caused by a very stupid energy policy. Then he went back to my policy because prices were going up so much. But uh, it'll end. If they won this election on day one, all of that would end, and you, this country will go through hell. And it can never come back. Once it goes, it's pretty far down already. I'm going to have to work very hard. It's pretty far down. When you, let, when you let 20 million people come into our country from places unknown and from prisons and from mental institutions and terrorists, Kamala Harris won't end the economic crisis. She will only make it worse. And why hasn't she done it? She talks about it. She's doing a plan. You know, she's going to announce it this week, maybe. She's, she's, she's waiting for me to announce it so she can copy it. Like, remember, a couple of days ago, and we will have no tax on tips. I said, that was my plan. Not only didn't she, I mean, they came up with a plan to go after all these people violently. Then one day she just uttered that sound, but she'll copy a lot of other things, too. But she'll never do them. She'll never do them. She'll say them for the election, but she'll never do them. She can't solve the problem because she is the problem. She really is. People like her. When I left office, I handed Kamala and crooked Joe Biden a surging economy with no inflation. The 30-year mortgage rate was 2.4 percent. Gasoline had reached $1.87 a gallon and, for periods of time, was even lower than that. The African-American poverty rate was down 7 percent. The Hispanic-American poverty rate was down 8 percent. The biggest drops, the greatest drops that you've ever seen in this country. They've never had it so well. Nobody, nobody has. Every group, every group, men, Women, Hispanics, Asians, Blacks, everybody was down at a level that nobody's ever seen. We had the we had some of the greatest periods of economic growth and health that uh, any country has ever seen. I think probably more than any country has ever seen. In four short years under President Trump, we passed the largest tax cuts in history, the largest regulation cuts in history. We unleashed American energy and real income surge by more than $4,200 in just a short number of months. I mean, we, we, it was, nobody, you never had it so good. Now you're not doing so well, I hated it. We had the strongest economy in history. There's never been a country that had an economy like us. I gave Harris and Biden an economic miracle, and they quickly turned it into an economic nightmare with a nation-wrecking agenda ripped straight out of Kamala's San Francisco liberal playbook, what they've done to poor San Francisco. Well, we're going we're gonna to try and bring that back, too. Harris and Biden waged war on American energy, threw open our borders, flooded the country with low-wage migrant workers, passed the Green News scam, racked up almost $10 trillion in debt, and buried our workers in job-killing regulations, costing $10,000 per family. That's a lot of money. You don't have to imagine what a Harris presidency would look like. You're living through the misery right now, except it will get worse. And you're paying the price, a price like nobody's ever paid. And we're disrespected all over the world as a country. You, we were respected before Putin respected us. President Xi of China respected us. Kim Jong-un of North Korea respected us. We were respected by everybody in the world. Today, we're being laughed at. Today, we're being laughed at all over the world. You're paying the price for Kamala's liberal extremism at the gas pump, at the grocery counter, and on your mortgage bill, and on everything else. How about your car insurance? How's that doing? Not too good, right? I saw today it's up like 82 percent. We're not going to let this incompetent socialist lunatic keep breaking our economy for four more years. It'll destroy our country.
On election day, we're going to tell her that we've had enough, that we can't take it anymore, Kamala. You're doing a horrible job. You were a terrible attorney general. You were a terrible district attorney. You're the worst vice president in history. Kamala, you're fired. Get out of here. Go. Get out of here. Right? Get out. Boom. Thank you. You've been listening to former Thank President you. Trump speaking Thank in Asheville, you. North Carolina, a speech thing. build about policy yeah, issues, talking right about here. the economy. We certainly saw the president, and I think you could tell when he was reading what was in the prompter scripted related to the economy, talking about his first term in office, a contrast that when you talk to Trump campaign advisors, they feel like is a winning message for them. And up until the last couple of days, polling seemed to bear that out, particularly against President Biden. Uh, a couple things off the top before I bring the panel in. Uh, it was true there was significant growth during the Trump administration. There's also been significant growth during the Biden administration. So there's been no jobs or losing jobs throughout the Biden administration that created over 15 million jobs. He continues to say he had the largest tax cut in history. It was certainly a significant legislative achievement for the former president and Republicans in the House and the Senate. It was nowhere near the largest tax cut in history. But more than anything else, he underscored that there are very clear differences in terms of the economic priorities, the economic policies, and the economic messages from the two candidates here. We should hear more from Kamala Harris, the vice president, when she speaks in North Carolina about the economy on Friday. I do want to bring my panel in. And Mark, I want to start with you. Um, you were in that. Oh, actually, we're going to start with Daniel Dale. Uh, Daniel, uh, he's with me to fact check some of what we heard. There was definitely policy. There was also stuff about laughing. Um, <laughs> what stood out to you, Daniel? Yeah, so you did some of the, the fact checking yourself, and I appreciate that. Everything you said was right. Uh, there were a bunch of claims that I think a lot of people would question, but that are subjective or uncheckable. Uh, he claimed California, where a whole lot of people happily live, is unlivable. Uh, he claimed that we're a banana republic in a third world country. I think a lot of people would dispute that. But also a whole bunch of claims, Phil, that were just flat out false. Uh, he again said that Kamala Harris was made the border czar uh, put by President Biden in charge of the border. That didn't happen. In reality, she was given a much more limited immigration-related assignment tasked with uh, dealing with the so-called root causes of migration in certain Central American countries. He repeated his claim that she's allowed 20 million people into the country. Aside from the question of her own role and responsibility, the total number of border so-called encounters under Biden and Harris is 10 million, and far from all of those people were actually allowed in. That includes the uh, people who were uh, expelled from the country upon arriving at the border. He boasted of how good uh, African-American uh, poverty, the poverty level, was during his administration. He didn't mention it's actually fallen to a low, lower level, a new record, beating the Trump era record under Biden and Harris. He called switching candidates in the Democratic primary a minor form of cheating. It's not a form of cheating at all. It's, it's allowed completely within the law and the rules. And he spoke of how the Inflation Reduction Act, he said, gave us record inflation. The U.S. has never had record inflation under Biden and Harris. Even the Biden-Harris peak of 9.1 percent uh, was a, about a 40-year high, nowhere near the all-time high of about 23.7 percent. And that 9.1 percent number has come way down since then. It's now 2.9 percent. So whatever peak it reached before, nowhere near, near it now. And finally, he spoke of so-called very good polls for him coming out right now and claiming we're leading. He might be seeing private numbers we're not seeing, but in the national averages of public polling, he's not leading. He's now trailing. Phil? All right, Daniel Dale, I apologize for stepping on you. Um, I'm glad I didn't get anything no, wrong. No Always appreciate your expertise, Daniel Dale, for us. I want to bring in CNN anchor Julia Chatterley. Julia, um, we heard the elements of the economic message that you want uh, the campaign advisors certainly want the former president to be talking about. What did you make in terms of the policy that we heard about? It's a good question. Uh, the good news is we're not going into a Great Depression this week, so he has changed the tune on that, but we're also not a third world nation. We have the largest economy in the world. We're in the top 10 in terms of growth per person, so we'll just debunk that. He, debunk that. Um, he talked a lot about real income shifts and drops. It depends on the data. What is true, of course, is that overall, in aggregate, 
We know that prices have risen 20 percent since uh, 2020. So that has been a huge real income hit to American workers. And talking about trying to tackle inflation is an important one, but we didn't get much detail on how he's going to do that. Even if he said by um, day one, it would be sort of a priority and, and fixed at this stage. He talked about energy policy. He's long complained that the Biden administration would destroy, quote, the oil and gas sector. Yet if you look at the data, actually our oil and gas production are near record. So even if it does increase under uh, a future President um, Trump administration, it's not been harmed by what we've seen by Biden, even if it does improve going forward. One of the things he did say, which was true, he talked about credit card debt being at record highs. The Federal Reserve Bank of New York says that um, U.S. consumers are now carrying more debt than ever before. It's just over $1.1 trillion for the second quarter. 50% of U.S. credit card holders are carrying a balance. That was 44% if you go back to Jan, and that's actually a rate not seen since before the pandemic. Delinquencies are also at the highest point since 2011. But where was the policy to tackle any of these things? He has changed his tune in terms of pointing out some of the weaknesses, I think, for the Biden administration. But again, tackling them himself, still lacking details.